Jerk of All Trades podcast, episode 10. Number 10. Lucky number 10. Oh my God. I don't think that's a lucky number, but in my book it is. Are we actually on podcast number 10? I believe 10? we're on episode 10. And wow. It, has... it seems just like yesterday. We were talking about WrestleMania. Yes. And uh, I hope that you weren't listening to us do that because <laughs> it sounded like uh, poo poo, but that's okay. We got a great show for you today. Yes. Amazing show. No poo poo in this show. No. All we hoping killer, for some... no filler. We're hoping for some bat poo poo, but that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. We uh, we didn't get any. Uh, I believe they call it uh, gu- uh, guana, guana, guanu. Uh, yeah, that's bat poop, and uh, we did not get that. So, but well, we got a lot of other bats. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, the universal call out from last week. We're gonna talk about uh, GOP candidate laying the smack down and uh, dropping the big boot. Maybe people yeah, are man. fucking dying from nacho cheese from the gas station. We got Eddie fucking throwing out uh, middle fingers at people. Um, we got Beats headphones or lighting people's heads on fire and so <laughs> much more. So you guys are going to love this show. And we're going to start out with the universal call out from last week and the results of that. So uh, I'm going to hit that first. So uh, basically the backstory, if you guys are not listening to every single episode. Last is, week. Uh, we, we we basically ha- kind of have some recurring themes in the show. Robots. Uh, ro- robots. And once we talk about those things, more of those type of things start to happen in the world. And so then we talk about them. If you want to be cool amongst your friends, you definitely want to tune into the Jerk of All Trades. Every single goddamn because week. Because we are so far ahead of the curve. Trend setters, I believe they like, call us. You know, you'll we be call cool ourselves with that. everybody because you listen to us. Yes, yes. So we had robots. We, we had robots. and Monkeys. Then, then we had monkeys. And then last week, we came up with the idea that we were going to basically have a section of the show called the Universal Callout. And in the Universal Callout, basically what we were going to do, we went onto a website that randomly generates four topics or however many topics you want. We picked four and we did that at the end of the show. And then Eddie and I picked from those four things and we both chose bats was what we were drawn to. I believe blacksmithing, bats. Africa, mountaineering, mountaineering and bats. <laughs> and what would have happened if we picked mountaineering? Uh, yeah, that would have been interesting. We definitely did not do that. We, went, we didn't go with it, but uh, who knows what would have happened? So we went with bats and I think both of us kind of were thinking of the animal bats. We yeah. kind of talked about just Jeff- where I was going with it. I believe Eddie said that Jeff Sessions might get attacked by a bat on LSD and rip his eyeballs out. Fuck yeah. And uh, that did not happen. And instead, what we caused, we caused a uh, shockwave into the universe in which every motherfucking person out there was getting beaten by baseball bats. <laughs> and that's not even an understatement. This isn't what we were asking for. No, we were not. We were asking for bats to attack really, really shitty Republicans who want to uh, bring back mandatory minimum sentences. And instead, what we got was... A bunch of people being beaten by bats. So let's fucking talk about that, Eddie. Why don't you? Why don't you this drop a couple of uh, the instances? Because well, there's God many. Damn it, man, we, we were talking about bats last week, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six stories. We can't even keep track of these fucking things. Of fucking people getting the beat down with a motherfucking baseball bat. Yeah, it's too much. Too much, man. Um, the newest one that just happened was this little boy at a Yankee game. Uh, Chris Carter, he plays for the Yankees. I don't know if he's a DH or a first baseman. But uh, his back bat broke, uh, swinging the bat, hitting the baseball, and, and the piece of the bat flew into the stands, and the bat nails this little kid. The sad thing is, is that it wasn't even just a regular ass kid; it was like a disabled kid. His oh, leg was no. already in a goddamn brace. God damn now it. he gets hit in the face with a baseball bat because we are jerks and because we throw it out that we want to get a good bat story. Instead, we get tons of really <laughs> we get a shitty bats. So- in the face with a bat. That wasn't what we meant, Universe. And this is only number one. We did not want that. And instead of getting some cool, you know, bats doing cool things and. I don't know, turning into vampires are real or something. Instead, we get yeah. things like uh, the Ariana Grande uh, tribute that was happening in uh, Birmingham. This, yeah, England. This happened in England. Yeah, we uh, we had a guy that came in with uh, with an axe and what the the website was describing as a stick. It's a bat. We looked at the goddamn pictures. It's a motherfucking bat. 
He had a goddamn bat. We we had a 32 year old woman who killed a 57 year old woman with a baseball bat. That was crazy. Um, Even more interesting is that uh, they said that she was always seen or often seen with a bat. So this bitch just be walking around with with a bat. If you you are not Chris Carter or some other baseball player complaining about my parking spot. I'm going to hit you with this damn thing. If you're walking around with a baseball bat all goddamn day, you're bound to do something God bad. And if JOAT it. throws it out into the universe, you're probably going to beat someone to death. And that was not what we wanted. Another crazy one. 18 year old arrested for using a bat in Jacksonville, Florida. Full video online. It's crazy, too. Uh, she hit two people in the head and smashed a car window. Yeah, she went fucking buck Go wild. Go the video if you haven't buck seen it Buck fucking yet. wild. Uh, then uh, the one of my favorite ones, we had uh, <laughs> bat-wielding robbers were smashing up a mall jewelry store. Um, they were masked guys. And I believe when I read this story, the only thing, the only thing I could think of was, was it the Warriors? And I would come out like, Warriors! Come out and play. <laughs> I, I don't know if Eddie, since Eddie's never seen the Toxic Avenger, I assume he's never seen the Warriors. I've seen the Warriors on Have Netflix. Have you? Oh, sh- I, I did not enjoy it. Oh, you did not like it? I'm sorry. It was C plus at best. Oh, uh, okay. But you know what? That was, that was what I, that was what I thought of. It was the, the fucking baseball furies from the Warriors are uh, heading out there and, you know, causing fucking havoc with <laughs> baseball bats. And so. then this ain't even the end of it. No, Last it continues one, on. An off-duty correctional officer beaten by his teen son in Anaheim with a motherfucking baseball bat. <laughs> you guessed it. This all happened in the span of seven days. Yes. So I believe what we can take from this is that the universe kind of misunderstood what we wanted. We didn't lay it out very definitively exactly how well, we wanted this I shit laid to play it out. out. I wanted Jeff Sessions to get his eyes pulled out by a fucking bat. Not a baseball bat, but a bat bat. I mean, there were six people that got beaten and some of them to death with baseball bats in the past week and none of them was Jeff <laughs> Sessions. So <laughs> no. that was pretty... Enough pretty... of the bats universe. Yes, um, stop doing it. We apologize to the victims of the bat stories. We don't want to make this light of it. This was not of no. our intention. No, but, no it was uh, not. You know, like I said, if we would have just said Eddie wins the lottery, we'd have been all good. That I don't, I don't think that would have happened. And the I think the generator one day will pull it up. So if you won the lottery, I believe you would win like two dollars on a fucking scratch off or something. Because technically, it. that would be you That'd still. That'd be me winning the lottery. That would still be you winning the lottery. I'll so take it. you need to lay it out a little bit more clearly, as we have learned. So I'll let the universe decide how much yes, money I at show. Yes, the. Uh, Keep stay tuned for the whole show because at the end of the show we are going to have our next universal call out. And we don't know what the topic is going to be. We're going to have four topics and it might be bat shit fucking crazy. Uh, and let's hope it's not bat shit fucking crazy. Let's hope it's something a little more humorous and uh, people are not being I brutalized. Little, so I don't, I don't yeah. mind a little crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm down for a little crazy. It, it, it all depends on uh, what level of crazy. I mean, it can't is, get so. any crazier. Yeah. Than, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it can't get any crazier than what's been going on in the rest of the world. Yeah, so like, whoa, uh, this was fucking nuts. So um, from people being beaten by bats, let's talk about uh, people being beaten by GOP Congress candidates. So Eddie, hit the next story. Yeah, man, the GOP candidate, uh, Greg Gianforte. Yes. Allegedly slammed Guardian reporter Ben Jacobs. I don't even uh, know if it's alleged. I believe that a lot I know, of people witnessed it. There's a lot it, of so. evidence going on here, but I have to put it in there. Yeah. He's got to go to trial. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Greg Jones. Guilty. Parker, he's a Montana Republican candidate. Uh, according to the story for you WWF fans, uh, he gave him the Baldo bomb, which is two hands around the neck, <laughs> up in the air, and then sit out style. I don't know. Did straight he sit- <laughs> through the fucking canvas. Did he, did he sit out? Do we know that? I believe he sat out, but I'm not sure. I believe there's speculation. As so this to what- motherfucker slams him, gets him on the ground, and then punches him and chokes him some more. Yeah. So I don't he know laid if it I, down, man. I'm not mad at this 100%. Like, you know, obviously he shouldn't have been so aggressive with this guy, but apparently there's Are been you a gonna... long-standing feud between these two. Oh, and come it finally on. culminated at this little WrestleMania match that they had. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes you just got to ball. I, be- I believe good. that you're justifying what he did. And I also want to add that we... I'm not justifying we it. We don't... I'm just saying, if I'm John Forte and this fucking reporter keeps getting up in my ass about retarded shit he might get a bald i believe too. he was actually talking about the republican health care plan that's going to rape 
uh, poor people and take their health care away so they die. But uh, so, I mean, if we want to call that uh, retarded with the quote uh, air quotes going on. Um, yeah, I think uh, I would go down that road. But instead, the this thing, is the first. Here's the thing. This is the first time anybody's ever been body slammed by a fucking. Here's guy here's the, the thing that I want us the <laughs> Republican Senate. I mean, God damn it. I want to speculate on, I don't think it was a Baldo bomb, man. I read the description and I almost think it was more of an STO, possibly a rock bottom. Um, I don't know if he threw the people's elbow down afterwards. He said two hands around the neck. Oh, uh, well, I thought that was afterwards. I thought that was after. Oh, maybe that's I believe, after. I believe that was when he was down. The Baldo the- bomb is definitely two hands around the Right. Neck. I believe that was actually, and this guy's actually bald too, so. <laughs> yeah, might that's have, what I'm saying. I, and I'm bald as well. I talked He's about my Baldo chrome dome before. Yeah, so. you rep this shit, man. So we don't know for sure what the move was. All I know is that when I read the headline and I heard that he body slammed this reporter, the only thing that I could think of was motherfucking Hulk Hogan. So I actually spent my morning creating a, uh, a little meme of... Uh, of this motherfucker as the motherfucking Hulkster because when I think of body slams, I think of Hulk Hogan. And I think of Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 3, his 24-inch pythons, Hulkamania is running wild, and he is body slamming Andre the Giant in front of, how many people were there? 500,000 people, I think were. 93,000. I believe there was like a million people there. Detroit, Michigan. Uh, Andre the Giant weighed like 900 pounds, I believe. Um, So um, that's all I could think of is, let me tell you something, Brother Jack. What you gonna do when the GOP in Republic of Mania runs wild on you, Jack? Dude, brother. 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 That was uh, that was another one of my terrible impressions. Uh, I have done a terrible Arnold impression. I did a chicken that sounded like a fucking rooster, and this week I did quite possibly the worst Hulk Hogan impression of all times. So well, I think Ben Jacobs learned a lesson here, and that's if you're gonna talk shit to uh, Mr. John Forte, you gotta work on your takedown defense. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. Jiu-jitsu class, Mr. Jacobs. Come on, man. I, I'm gonna imagine that uh, news reporters also are not, uh, you know. Also, UFC fighters and down in the MMA game. And you know what? If you're, I believe it's called self defense. If you are an MMA and fighter you don't have and to be a, a news MMA reporter, let us know. To learn self defense. All right. Women yeah. can learn self defense. Oh, even children can learn. Even self-defense. even women can Especially do it. Especially if you're in Twin Peaks, you're gonna need that. Shit. I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Eddie, anybody can learn self defense. It doesn't have to be just, right. It can. You can be a news reporter for the Guardian, and you can still do it. The uh, the one the one other thing that I wanted to talk about with this as well was uh, Mr. Gianforte. Uh, also has some Russian ties, and I think we also, Russian the Russian ma- the Russian mafia. I did my Russian or I did my Arnold impression last week, which actually sounded like a Russian impression. So I won't go back down that road. You can go to last week's episode. Well, uh, not the Twin Peaks, the episode before, and listen to that terrible impression. But uh, so it's actually come out that he actually owns about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in index funds that are tied to the Russian economy. So um, yeah, yeah, th- was this possibly like a Russian? Uh, attack on the American news media. Is that possible? That was uh, possibly laid down by Trump. Do you think Trump had anything to do with this? We did watch him brutally push that guy earlier today. Oh so, yeah, that was brutal. Uh, he was on camera, so he decided that he would not baldo bomb him. Um, but he might possibly do that in the future. So yeah, I think Trump can throw a stunner though. He might be able to stun somebody. Uh, I believe Trump has actually been stunnered before and I would love to see him get stunnered again. So yeah, so it looks like Mr. John Forte got cited for misdemeanor assault. Uh, if he's got 250k in fucking yeah. Russian stock indexes, I'm sure he's doing all right. I think he can afford a little misdemeanor action. Yeah, all yeah, good. he's okay with it, and I'm not so okay with it because yeah, fuck this guy. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, you're a goddamn politician, and you're not okay with news reporters, whether or not they have the same political views, or maybe they're you know spouting a different political ideology than what you are spouting. You just can't fucking start body slamming motherfuckers. <laughs> like, did he break a table I out if this or guy what? Is a wrestling fan? I don't think so. I think he's just a fucking really, really angry fucking Republican who's never getting goddamn laid. And um, so yeah, that's how you become, you know, a Republican. I believe so. Yeah. I think that Donald Trump keeps t- trying to touch his wife, and she keeps swatting his hand away. So maybe that's yeah. why he's so goddamn angry. Besides his terrible hairpiece, just be bald, man. God damn it. It's fucking 2017, man. If you're, I don't think we've ever had a bald president. 
Um, that's a great question. I, I don't know for sure. I don't sure. think we have. I'm not sure though. I mean, I haven't. I'm only thirty or twenty two years old. Uh, I don't think so. But I'm sure back in the day they all were wore like powdered wigs and such. So yeah, you really it, couldn't. It's always tell. been weird. Yeah, it's not very presidential to be bald. So what you're saying is I'm never going to be able to be president because that was actually my hope is that I could be president one day. You were going to try to be president? No, I was not going to try to become president. God damn it. That was a joke. Oh, okay. And I think I think that you actually understood that and you pretended that you didn't. So yeah, I mean, that's okay. you would have to really win me over to, to get my vote. Uh, I believe I gave you a 2.8 on completed. Yeah, see, that's not going to work. For so me. I think Trump gave me a 5.7. Uh, uh. 5.8 it was. Let's not go down this road again. I might, I might, I, we might have to have the first live stunner on the JOAT podcast and it will be from Ray the Jerk to Eddie the Jerk. That'll be for me praising Barack Obama for his, uh, at the end of his <sighs> Eddie loves term. calling people retarded and I do not support that at all. So just want to lay that out there. So yeah, I didn't call him retarded. I said his ex had retarded. <laughs> That makes all the difference in the world. Political. So. You want to be president. You got to learn these things. You're going to be president. Is that what you're saying? Eddie, the jerk I is would running be president for president before you would be president. Because you're not bald. Uh, I would have to grow my hair out. Yeah. <laughs> and I all, and, to be president. Yeah. I also, yeah. And I don't think there's a, has there ever been a president with tattoos. That is a good question. I don't think so. Unless think they Obama have a, probably had one. You think he had a tramp stamp? I wouldn't be surprised. I bet you that President Trump has a tattoo right on his D, don't you think? Probably got a tattoo on his pelvis, and it says the man on it. Oh, my goodness. Ah! Fucking gracious. <laughs> I wonder if his wife thinks that. I don't think so. so. I, I could care less, to be honest with you. <laughs> you couldn't care less, actually. Uh, if you could care less, you know, you I, care a little I, bit, I, right? I don't even care at all. I, I love couldn't Trump care less about then. a tenth as much as you hate Trump. I believe that you're just trying to get a rise out of me and <laughs> I'm going to let it happen because we're on the podcast. It's true. You and hate Trump. I do hate Trump. You can admit it. I am admitting it. I've admitted it multiple times. I am not a Trump fan whatsoever. So fuck Trump. Well, if you don't like Trump, you need to learn how to survive the fucking beat down, laid down by Jump yep. Forte. Don't go to fucking California and go to the gas station, buy nachos. No. You're doing it with a stomach ache like a motherfucker. It is a stomach ache to end all goddamn stomach <laughs> aches. I'll tell you what, I've had a uh, a bit of a weak stomach for my whole life. And um, you know what? I know based on that that I probably should not go to the gas station and I probably should not get fucking nachos there. Fucking Sacramento, California. What the fuck, man? Dude. Crazy, crazy. Uh, fucking cheese sauce there. Uh -huh. Cheese sauce, which I believe is not actually officially cheese. It's a cheese product, which <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure exactly what that means. Is that government cheese? Uh, I believe they, I believe Fucking Trump and his government cheese. I believe that Trump has actually cut off actually all got, government Obama cheese. Obama started that government cheese, now that I think about no, it. No, government cheese has been around for a goddamn long time. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, dude. Seriously, get out. You're, I'm going to do the rest of the podcast by myself. So Cheese uh, tested positive for botulism. Fucking botulism, man. Uh, I've, I've heard of botulism. I never gotten botulism luckily um and i didn't know a ton about it but yeah it could be pretty fucked up it blurs your vision it gives you goddamn drooping eyelids you look like that goddamn fucking uh droopy dog from the uh the fucking cartoons back in the day that was always high as fuck um you got slurred speech uh which could also happen if you're one of the hosts on the joat podcast and you do the beer episode <laughs> and you drink 12 goddamn beers in an hour and a half you definitely end up with that and luckily uh you don't end up with paralysis but you can with botulism and uh there are other uh ailments as well and sometimes it could be fatal luckily it's only three to five percent that die from botulism but uh, that was not the case here. Well, I guess, I mean, there was 10 people and one of them died. Nine of them are uh, are ill in the hospital. So, I mean, I guess that's actually ah, less. You'll never catch me buying nachos at the hospital. That's less than three to five. So, anymore. yeah, I, I can't remember the last time I fucking bought nachos at the goddamn gas station. Uh, yeah. Something I honestly normally try to avoid. Uh, not well, it had to be a stoner in fucking California, man. He's probably high as a mother. He, he definitely might be high, and we might be touching on that later, but uh, that's only speculation. We don't know if any of these people were high or if they just wanted really disgusting cheese product and stale-ass fucking circular I'm not going to lie. I, I might chips. throw down on some bunk-ass nachos. Though. Yeah, so maybe, maybe by the end of the podcast, Eddie might be throwing down on some bunk-ass nachos. I'm going to drive out to Cal uh, Sacramento, California, and I'm going to go to this gas station, and I'm going to get him some potentially botulism-infected nachos, and he's going to eat them, and we're going to see what he thinks about those. 
and then we'll have the live feed of Eddie um, getting botulism. So yeah, it'll be the first time ever uh, live feed Doing of botulism. It for the podcast. Yes, it's worth it for the podcast. Uh, getting fucking botulism. So I'll see you in three days. I'll take care of the rest. So I figured this might be a good time for another one of my terrible impressions. So uh, this is one of my favorite shows growing up because uh, I was immature and I'm still pretty immature, as you can tell. So this is my uh, this is my butthead uh, responding to this. So huh, huh, huh. these nachos roll. Oh, yeah, that's actually Beavis, I oh, believe. Man, you morphed. Uh, you shape shifted right in the middle. Of that these shit. nachos rule. Um, suck. And that was uh, Butthead. I think your Beavis is better than Yeah, you. my my Beavis is actually quite a bit. Come on, Butthead. Come yeah. on, I want those nachos. Let nice. me get some of those nachos. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Beavis. God. Oh, God damn it. God damn it, Beavis. So, yeah, my Butthead is actually pretty terrible. So I think we'll have to work on that. Eddie will do Butthead and Stay I will Stay away do from the gas station nachos. Man. I am the big Cut Julio. I need nachos for my bunghole. Yeah, there, there's the Beavis and Butthead terrible impressions. Um, we you may get more terrible impressions as the weeks uh, go on, or we may get no See, more impressions. See, if you guys so. were to send us emails, we wouldn't have to do these terrible impressions right. because you would say, fuck these impressions. But since you don't, you get what we give you. You're going you're gonna to get it, and you're going to like it. And you know what? None of these people probably said to themselves when they woke up that day, man, you know what I'm looking forward to the most today? <laughs> I can't wait to go to the fucking... BP or whatever got mobile or whatever gas station is in California. I don't know. If, it didn't say which one. I think right. it's like a mom and pop. Right. I want to go to the, the random mom and pop grocery or uh, gas station. And I want to get some fake ass cheese sauce and some stale ass chips. And I want to get botulism. I don't even, I don't think they even thought that minus the botulism thing, something somewhere went wrong in their life and they ended up eating gas station nachos. And then something went even more wrong. And, RIP to the guy that fucking died that way because yeah, that's, that's a bad way to go. And I'll tell you what, I'm living my whole life and I'm never thinking, man, I really, I really think I might possibly die from botulism from fucking nachos from the gas station. So when I read this, I was instantly thinking about all the times I've gone to the gas station and bought shit. Whether it's in the smiley middle of the face night, cookies. Of the yeah, it's like, man, it's like, man, you were high every one of those times, too, I think. I think it was every single one of those times. Why do you think yes. I was buying smiley face cookies? I was in a good mood. Yeah, because you were high as a motherfucker, and then you ate that goddamn cookie, and it didn't have botulism, luckily, and you survived. And thank God you did, because here you are, and you're on the JOAT podcast. and Doing the damn thing. You are my cohort in these crimes against humanity that we're committing via podcast. Yeah, no and kidding. so, um, yeah, a lot of other people out there are committing crimes against humanity as well. And with that said, I'm going to throw to Eddie. And he is going to give the J-O-A-T middle finger of the week. And I can guarantee you we are going to hear, uh, definitely, definitely hear about someone throwing Dude, something around. So, Eddie, is, hit it. Hit this it. Is, this guy, man, out in Portland, Oregon, right? Middle finger of the week to this guy. Fuck this guy, all right? Throwing semen on women. I mean, he, he, he assaulted a woman. By throwing semen on Not her. in a bedroom either. And it was not in consensual. In the parking lot of like a grocery store, I guess. Yes. As she was getting in her vehicle, got a little cup of semen action, probably <laughs> ice cold. Ice Fucking. cold. Can you get semen ice cold? I don't know if that works. The well, consistency. How, how long do you think it was in the cup for? I, I don't, I have no goddamn clue. Those are things, those are questions that we need answered and that we're not getting answers on. So yeah, this goofball of Portland, Oregon, probably from Twin Peaks, assaulting women with semen. Fucking what is wrong with people what are you doing to these women leave these chicks alone they, she didn't want to taste your semen doing it herself she doesn't want to taste your semen no in a fucking cup in the parking lot she's not feeling it dude so uh yeah man uh pff, this guy's still out on the loose there's three other victims they all had dna testing it's all the same person uh, is that like the monica Lewinsky thing do you think they use the same lab to test the semen on their clothing as well as they tested uh, Mr. Bill, Bill Clinton's seed? Probably not. Probably not the same Portland, person. Oregon. Yeah, pri they probably didn't uh, outsource that uh, to Washington, uh, I was surprised Washington, to hear they even whatever. had a DNA testing in fucking Portland. Actually, no. Come on. Portland's actually pretty progressive. As yeah, I believe they're actually quite progressive. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, one of the women that got cum dumpstered had the same thing happen last year as well. So. Which is really, really bizarre to me, like... What are you doing with your life that more than one time at the same location, you are one of three victims of 
having semen thrown at you. Like, what is wrong with this guy? I don't know. He just really wants to spread his seed, and he doesn't really understand how to actually do that. Uh, There's got to <laughs> be more to this story. Um, Are these ex-girlfriends, you know, did they fucking rob him? rob his house or something uh, is there is there an evil debt he's paying back i don't think so i think he just probably went down some deep dark pathways on the internet and somehow that became a thing that you know he got into and then he's running on around or walking on around and throwing comma on chicks because uh, this is so premeditated it's not even funny <laughs> yeah i i thought you were gonna say premature <laughs> and uh yeah uh, definitely a little ejaculation uh, going on here. So fuck this guy. Our initial middle finger of the week was going to go out to the the jabronis out in uh, ISIS. Jabronis, uh, they're jabronis, yeah. and they don't deserve a second more on this podcast. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about. Them. Yeah, this guy deserves. You know, he usually but fuck lo- this guy. Yeah. Uh, one of the funny things that I thought was one of the ladies said that uh, there was a video where they had like just her body, you know, from the uh, the neck down. And uh, she was saying that she's still watching her back. And I was wondering, was she watching her lower back? Because I feel like that might be a spot he might be uh, he might be uh, putting a bullseye on. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Fuck this guy, though. This is fucked up. Don't do this. This is one of the douchier things you can try to accomplish yeah, in life. Don't, don't fucking throw your douches at people. Don't throw your goddamn semen at people. Don't fucking Spider-Man people. What the fuck, dude? What are you doing? <laughs> What the fuck are you doing with your life? Like, how pathetic must you feel? After I hope they you- catch you and beat the fuck out of you. Yes, they need to beat you off so hard that you'll never come again. That should be what should happen in this scenario here. So is that cruel and unusual? It might be, but throw- trying to create a single person uh, bukkake uh, on women at the grocery store in Portland is not cool either. So fuck you. I think Eddie will agree with that. Fuck this guy. Fuck you. So I yeah. I'd like to see you try to do that shit to me. I'll fuck your ass up. I don't think you I don't think he's aiming for you, so Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm his type. No, you're not. That's so, all right. Yeah. Well if I ever right. see him in action, it'll definitely catch a whooping. Yes, yes. We don't want to see you in action. So <laughs> Yeah. So. All right, all right. Where are we at? Thirty minutes? Uh yeah. Yeah, I think it's about time we're gonna hit our first break. And then we are going to come back and we're going to hit a lot of more fun topics. We got a fucking trophy hunter gets crushed by a goddamn, uh, I was going to say an alien. It's actually an elephant, (laughs) an Um, alien elephant. And we got some uh, interesting uh, topical stuff. Instagram and Snapchat are fucking up your kid's mental health. And Beats headphones blowing up in the air. Yes, and we got a whole. We got a bunch of progressive medicine yes, going on. Should be on. fun, fun, fun. Um, you know, if you want to learn something new, stick with us. We will be back. Yes. All right. back jerk of all trades podcast episode number 10 we're in the double digits now and we are back and better than fucking ever so only 90 more until we're in the triple digits. yeah so that will be you know that'll be a little bit but we'll get there soon Eventually, enough we'll be there so coming back Last week, we talked about the fucking Jimmy John's founder and was he fucking a dead shark while his buddy uh, cocked in the background and beat off his little meat while he humped this dead shark. And we also talked about his affinity for trophy hunting. And this week, the universe sent a very clear message to trophy hunters, which is just leave these goddamn animals alone. So, Eddie... Really? Hit it, tell them about it, and yeah. Zimbabwe, Africa, on a group hunt, hunting, uh, you know, these exotic animals and shit. 
which they love to do because they got lots of money. Motherfucker got squashed by a motherfucking elephant. Perfectly justified, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I don't believe it was Jimmy John. It was not Jimmy John, I believe. But the, uh, the speculation is he's still alive. Yeah, he was charged upon by four breeding elephants. You know, they were trying to hunt down these elephants. What was he thinking? So these elephants were fucking, and this guy was... Yeah, he's <laughs> like, all right, they're distracted. Right. Let me get my shot. What he was really thinking is, I want to turn, and yeah. <laughs> I can't wait until I kill this goddamn elephant, and then I'm going to mount its dead body, and I'm going to have my buddies take a picture of it, and I'm going to put it on my social media, and yeah, what the fuck was he thinking, dude? Craziness, yeah. So if, if you're trying to hunt elephants... Expect that you might get charged upon and fucking squashed like you're fucking facing John Cena in the year 2005. You can't see him. Actually, he's fucking huge and he never forgets and you will definitely fucking die. So basically, yeah. basically what happened is uh, he got picked up by the fucking trunk of this goddamn elephant. And I can't imagine what must have been going through his goddamn mind when he's trying to fuck with these elephants. And all of a sudden this elephant's like, I'm gonna pick you up in my goddamn trunk. And then all of his hunter buddies were like, hey, we should fucking shoot that elephant. So they did. And that was a bad decision because, hey, maybe the elephant was just going to pick him up and like set him on his back and like he was going to ride off into the sunset. <laughs> I don't imagine that was what was going to happen. But his hunter buddies fucking shot the elephant and then the elephant fell on top of uh, his name was Thenius Botha. Uh, I don't know where the fuck he's from. That is an interesting name. Um, it was an interesting name because unfortunately, well, maybe not all that unfortunate. Now he's dead. So, yeah. What the fuck was this dude thinking? Yeah, 33,000 elephants are killed every year by poachers. So this is 33,000 to one, right? Yeah, this would be and one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if they were poaching them. I don't think they were taking the trunks. But, uh, yeah, it's it's very unfortunate that this shit still happens. You know, leave these fucking wait, animals wait, wait. alone. Is it unfortunate that these motherfuckers get squashed by elephants or that they keep trying to kill no, goddamn elephants? I'm, I'm talking about the 33,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Leave them I, alone. I, like I was saying before, this guy deserved it. This guy had it coming. Yeah. You know, this is karma all the way through. And, uh, you know, if you want to fucking do your little hunting, do your thing, but just know that you're going to hunt some elephants, you might get squashed. Yes, yes. Uh, one other real quick thing I wanted to touch on with this is I believe last week we had four topics, and one of the topics was actually Africa. And that was my second choice. And now we get a trophy hunter who gets motherfucking squashed by this goddamn elephant. Yeah. So um, even when we don't actually select that topic, I'm sure there was a great blacksmithing and mountaineering topic out there somewhere that we just didn't there had find. To be. There had to be. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're throwing this shit out in the world, and sadly, we're making people die. So <laughs> maybe we shouldn't do the universal call-out anymore, but... We're doing the Lord's work. We're, we're doing whatever God you worship and believe in's work, and... Just treat the world with loving hands. And don't shoot the messenger. The world. Get it? Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> don't, don't shoot the goddamn elephant. Let him fucking set you on his back. Right off into the sunset. Have a beautiful fucking life together. It's a goddamn Disney movie. But instead, you're dead. And I did want to also say R.I.P. Uh, Cecil the Lion. Cecil the Lion from we last love you, year. R.I.P. to you. That was some bullshit. They killed you too. That was also the plot of a Disney movie, I believe. Uh, I believe that was uh, Simba. Well, who is Simba's dad? The Lion King. Yeah, yeah. What was his dad's name? I don't know. Uh, Simba's I dad. Don't, I don't remember. I don't know, but I believe head. a poacher killed him too. And so, um, yeah, quit fucking killing these goddamn animals. Leave them the fuck alone, and the world will be a better place, and you won't be dead. And actually, maybe the world's a better place because that guy's not around anymore. So, am I right or am I right? Mufasa? Uh, sure. Mufasa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mufasa. Yeah. 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 Fucking leave them the Mufasa. fuck alone. Yeah. So, OG. Mufasa. Yes. We love you. Mufasa. RIP. RIP. So, uh, yeah. Well, too bad these hunters weren't wearing Beats headphones <laughs> because they're motherfuckers are douchebags hunting elephants. These motherfuckers wearing Beats headphones, getting lit on fire. Yeah, I don't know that uh, wearing the Beats headphones would have actually worked out for them. It may have possibly prevented them from going forward with their trip to kill the elephant and then subsequently get killed themselves. But let's talk about the fucking lady who I'm looking at the picture here. Her, So you can see her whole face. 
just like her fucking Ooh, eye socket man. area is censored out. So you definitely can't tell who she is, <laughs> but the rest of her face looks like it's covered in goddamn. And she's a little soot. cutie too. This is a shame. She get her fucking face. Lit it's off. uh, it's actually tough to tell if she is actually a cutie or not. She looks like she might be sort of attractive, but um, she looks like she might partially be in blackface, and it's not uh, it's not a racist thing. It's actually just. She's got damn. a little charcoal action. She going on she's in her got face some charcoal. There. We uh we light the charcoal up uh in our little ceremonial J O A T podcast uh ritual before the show. And uh it looks like she wiped that shit all over her face. So uh basically what happened, she was on a flight from Beijing, uh China to Melbourne, uh, Australia, and she was wearing a pair of triple A battery powered beats headphones. The old school version. The uh the old school version uh Apple actually bought these uh from Mr. uh Mr. Dre in uh, the year 2014 and I guess they do not make any beats headphones anymore that have triple A batteries. So do You know Dr. Dre's real name? Um I believe I thought it was Kurt. No, no, I I, I can't get it. That's 50 cent. I I believe throw it to me. Andre Young. Andre Young. I you know what I actually I knew his first name was Andre, I believe. Um, I didn't know his last name, so that was uh, Eddie dropping some rap game knowledge. NWA. On me. Yes. What up? Yes. So, uh, so Apple is uh, blaming the use of a third-party battery, which I'm not really sure what the fuck that means. Like, if you bought Energizer or Duracell, would that be okay? But if you bought Railvac, <laughs> would that be all right? Like, if you bought the Store brand or like whatever, like dumb shit fucking batteries come with, you know, your shit when you buy it on Amazon or something. Um, those are always questionable. You buy a new TV and you get those fake ass batteries and you've never seen that brand before. Yeah. Maybe she took those out of her goddamn remote at her house from her brand new TV and she put them in oh, her no. Beats headphones. Those batteries wouldn't have made it to the burning her face. Yeah. They would have died off like way beforehand. They would have definitely. These were definitely some Energizer Duracell style batteries. Uh, but they're they're third third party, which is confusing to from me. From China. Because, <laughs> and this actually did happen uh, in China, so they can always pass that buck, you know. And uh, yeah, Apple has a long history with China, as we've talked about with the suicide nets and such. But um, could you imagine listening to your music on a plane, and then all of a sudden your shit just explodes? That is like this is just fucking. That crazy. is the most fire fucking album you've ever. I heard. love listening to music. I love wearing my headphones. I got a real nice pair of headphones. If my shit blows up. While I'm fucking listening to headphones, I'm fucking pretty pissed off. I'm going to probably... Especially if it is a good song. I'm going to delete that, whatever that song is, off of my playlist because that shit is way too fire. And um, yeah, it's way too lit to be fucking listening to on a goddamn plane with Beats headphones. Uh, from what I understand, I, I'm going to be honest, I've never never even put a pair of Beats headphones on my fucking head before. But from they're what... They're very bassy. From, from what I've understood... They're, they're extremely yeah. uh, heavy in the bass. From what I've understood, they're... Which they're is why I don't very, very overpriced. I've got yeah. some, like, music recording headphones that I use that um, cost me a hell of a lot less than fucking Beats headphones do, and they sound pretty fucking good. So... And they also don't set on fire. I've worn them countless, countless times. I wear them on every podcast, and they don't set my goddamn head on fire. I have a chrome dome, and I can't fucking let that happen. I also have a large beard, which would definitely set on fire, and you don't want to hear, or maybe you do, the episode of the JOAT podcast where Ray's fucking beard sets on fire because his goddamn <laughs> headphones fucking light up like a fucking match. So that's uh, that's definitely you better fucking be careful about scary. That, man. Scary, you, scary. We speak things on this podcast, and it happens in real life. So. I, am, I am actually a little bit worried I might get a new pair of headphones, and honestly, maybe if I get a new pair, that might actually cause the thing. So this fucking shit was crazy so apparently a bunch of people uh she was asleep and she was listening and there was a loud explosion that was heard by other passengers and uh the thing that fucking killed me about this was apparently she then threw them to the ground as you would and then the flight attendants flushed them down the goddamn toilet like what i mean couldn't they just like grab a bottle like an overpriced bottle of water or something and like poured it on it no they decided to flush them down the fucking toilet well it's weird because those airplane toilets don't have water in them yeah, and I'm sure that they definitely clogged that goddamn toilet, and then there was some fucking uh, nurse or something that had to take a piss, and she was like, I've got a fucking weak bladder, yeah. and I've got to go take it, a piss. Definitely united. <laughs> and they're like, nope. Nope. Can't we, do it. We flushed this lady's fire fucking Beats headphones down the fucking toilet, and now it's clogged, and nobody can take a dump, and no one can take a piss. They should and- just let that chick piss on the headphones. Man, if if the lady who had to pee and the Beats headphone lady were on the same fucking flight, that would have been fucking perfect. A match made in she, heaven. A match made in fucking heaven or a match made in hell. I'm not really sure what, but that would have two, two peas in a motherfucking United pod 
And why the fuck did that not happen? So that would have been hilarious. Absolutely fucking yeah, hilarious. It was definitely not Dr. Dre's fault. He was high when he made him. Yeah, Dr. Dre, all I can say is this lady needed a lot of goddamn chronic after this shit happened. If you look at her face, you can definitely tell that she oh, is she hurt. should get free weed for like the next hundred years. Whatever this airline is, needs to give her some goddamn free weed. She Send her ass chronic, to Cali man. or fucking Canada and get her some goddamn. Get, him, get her some of that RX sativa. There you go. Uh, medical grade. Yes, she sure. fucking deserves it. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna put a pair of Beats headphones uh, on because I have been on Instagram and Snapchat all day and I just can't fucking handle it anymore. I'm so goddamn depressed yeah. and I just want to light my goddamn head on fire. <laughs> Um, I actually don't want to do that, and I'm speaking the shit into the world too much, and it's probably going to happen now. So, Eddie, why don't you hit him with the next topic? Yeah, you know, yes. I was surfing the web the other day, and I saw that Instagram and Snapchat are ranked the worst apps for children's mental health. They are depressed as fuck, dude. This is crazy because, you know, Instagram is very popular. Snapchat, yes. very popular. We use them on the regular. Yeah. Um, Snapchat, we're, uh, we're brand new to. Yeah, if, and you I- wanna, if you want to get at us on Snapchat, we got that Jerk of All Trades podcast at Snapchat. Yeah, yeah, I've, I know nothing about Snapchat as I've talked about besides the McDonald's thing. I Snapchatted my wiener, but uh, you know, yeah. I'm just glad you didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I did not. I actually did not see it. Thankfully, so it, yeah. it says that uh, this has the worst impact on children's mental health. Uh, in the uh, for for children, they tested 1,500 kids between the ages of 14 and 24 years old says it induces anxiety, depression, and loneliness, and that Instagram and Snapchat apps are more addictive than cigarettes, alcohol. And crack cocaine. I don't think they said that. Well, I think but, cigarettes and alcohol are more addictive than crack. Um, I think just more people are probably using it. I think there's more a deeper physical dependency for people that are using crack I knew crack a guy cocaine. in Florida. He tried to quit smoking cigarettes, and it was like he was crack. The two weeks, the first two weeks after he tried to quit smoking cigarettes, his eyes were always very dilated, shifting from side to side all the time. Was he on psychedelics possibly? Or? No, he no. was just trying to quit smoking and he would come downstairs all the time and because I would give him like candy and shit like fucking. Uh, you were in a, van, a white van or something and you're yeah, like, yeah, I had that hey, candy. You, hey, you want a he popsicle? Yeah, but uh, see like gum and candy, it helps, uh, yeah. you know, curb the. Uh, the oral fixation or the. The, the yeah. nicotine. Yeah. Or whatever. And so, like, you know, when I, he would come down and ask for help and shit, and I'd help him out, and fucking he looked like he was recovering from heroin or something. Yeah. It was fucking crazy. So it's weird that Instagram and Snapchat have a similar fucking uh, response to fucking children. So basically, if I had kids, you know, they wouldn't even have a goddamn smartphone. Yeah. You got to yeah, go out, young. It's time to go outside. Hit that basketball court. Time to go to play. Hit that fucking football field. You got to do something. You can't sit in the house all day and fucking eat all the goddamn food. Get your ass outside and play some goddamn sports and be a fucking man for once in your life. Oh, let's not go down. Oh, be be a man. Be a man. Uh, Come on. The world's changing. So, you know what? Don't be a pussified, you know, little guy smoking cigarettes and fucking drinking alcohol because you ain't cool. You're not cool. Go out and do something with your life. Put down the phone. You're actually pretty cool. Go outside and do some shit. You actually look very cool when you smoke cigarettes. Uh, it actually makes you much more manly. Uh, the Marlboro Man is probably the most manly man that I've ever seen in my fucking life. And I think that drinking alcohol actually makes you much, much more manly. So, um, kids, if you're listening to the podcast, ah. I want to let you know that Ray the Jerk supports you doing all kinds of things that your parents probably don't want you to do. Drop out of school, smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, do crack cocaine, do every single drug under the planet uh, because you only live once. YOLO, you know? So There's going to be a story next week where fucking 14-year-olds are fucking doing drugs. <laughs> well, I mean, 14-year-olds are doing drugs and uh, yeah. crack cocaine and fucking everything. I mean, I believe that's happening. So I, let's talk about the actual reason why Instagram and Snapchat are so depressing to kids. And the reason why is because... They're so focused on the image, the image of you as the person. So, you know, you have to put your image out there and, you know, your physical form. And I think that's the big aspect of Snapchat and Instagram that really causes these sort of mental issues with children is that, you know, I mean, fuck, I was a fucking 
you know, I was a kid, I was 12, 13, 14, and these things didn't exist at that point. And, you know, I still had some fucking issues. So I can't imagine like having to balance what's happening, you know, in your, you know, middle school or, you know, early high school or whatever, or, you know, even elementary, but then you also have to balance like your social image on top of that. And especially on platforms that are very, very, very focused on you as an individual and like your physical, um, you know, appearance and that type of stuff, especially, you know, you're fucking, you know, you're going through puberty and you're growing hair in weird areas and you're fucking got, uh, bumps and shit all over your fucking face and God knows where else. And so I can't imagine how tough that must be to balance both, both of those things. And so, yeah, the kids today are definitely living in a, uh, in a harsh environment. And I believe that, you know, people, always talk about back in my day, you know, man, man up and, uh, don't be a pussyfied man. I believe, uh, that was actually Eddie, the jerk. I believe earlier, I but, just said that trademark right. me. Yeah. Tra- trademark Eddie. And he can definitely trademark that. Cause I'm not trademarking that, but I think that, you know, kids today are dealing with a different set of issues and obviously everybody dealt with, you know, difficult issues, you know, in the era that they grew up in. But I think this is a whole different dynamic that they're dealing with as well. And so it's yeah. simple. Put the phone down. Yeah, put the phone down. Shut shut off the computer, put your phone down, get the fuck outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, you know, I think there's balance. I'm not saying, hey, you know, kids shouldn't utilize the internet because I think there's a lot of positive there. And I think social media, when you utilize it, um, I'm not here to tell people how to use it, but I think you're going to get out what you put in. And so, you know, if you find you know, the good in it and you don't focus on that aspect of it, I think you can find a lot of good. I mean, for me, I'll tell you, I mean, it's cool to be able to connect with people that, you know, I might not see or uh, talk to all the time and, you know, be able to still keep up with them. And so I think there's positive to that, but you know, there's obviously some negative as well. And I especially think it builds when you're a lot of anti-socialness, you know, these kids, you got your friends out in fucking California, Oregon, Texas, but when you have friends, you don't have any friends in real life. I, you don't I think have that's a sweeping statement. To. And then when you go to a fucking party and you sit in the fucking corner and you don't talk to anybody and you're scrolling on your phone the whole time, you're a fu- you 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 ha- you have nothing to say, nothing to do. You have to learn to interact with people face to face. You know, you have to build a relationship with yeah. the people in the room. Those people in Oregon and California are cool. That's great. But there's people in the room that might want to get to know you. There might be cool people standing across from you. Yeah. And you never talk to them because you're sitting there looking at your phone. It's right. just, to me, it's unacceptable. So, I mean, I think what the answer to that is, is instead of being on your phone all the time when you're at a party, start smoking because the cool kids are out smoking. So you start smoking cigarettes, you go out and hang out with them. Uh, you drink alcohol because that's going to lower your inhibitions and then you're going to be a lot cooler everyone is going to look much more attractive to you. And subsequently, if they're drinking, you're going to look, look much more attractive to them. And Hey, maybe some like, you know, premarital, you know, sexual no. relations or something. What you do is you get on the dance floor and you bust a motherfucking move. <laughs> Eddie See, is supporting if you put busting the phone a fucking down, move. If you learn how to fucking bust a move on the dance floor, you wouldn't have to worry about being antisocial and fucking stupid. Just sitting in the fucking corner, bust the fucking move, get off the fucking couch Learn how to dance. It's not that hard. I don't know how you to. You don't even have to dance that good. I know you don't. I've, know not, I've, dance. Ne- I've never You're busted. You've never danced a single minute in your entire life. I've never busted a non ironic move in my entire life, but I can still talk to people. So I don't think you need to bust a move, but. It'll make you more sociable. It'll make you easier to approach. Yeah. It'll make new friends. Put the fucking apps down unless you're going to follow the jerk of all trades on social media. Yes, please. iTunes, Stitcher, subscribe, comment, rate. Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus, we're all there for you. You need us. We're here for you. J-O-A-T podcast.com. Do not forget. J-O-A-T podcast. Jerk of all trades podcast at gmail.com as well. Hit us up at the email. We're we're down to the wire, but we will be back with the best segment of the podcast, Progressive Medicine, which is my personal favorite. All right. We'll see you on the flip side, guys.
back. Jerk of all trades podcast. Uh, you know, we've talked about LSD, talked about acid previously on the podcast, talk about Canada legalizing marijuana. Yeah. Well, now ketamine, ketamine as well. Ketamine as well. That's right. We, we're all about that progressive medicine. We love it. We love it. Let's and, change you know, it up, man. As the years go by, we're learning more and more things about the human brain, learning more and more things you can do to the human brain to make it better and to the body to heal the body as well. But uh, right here, we just want to talk about California. Good old Cali. Yeah, California. man. Cali, Cali, man. I might be Knows out there sooner to party. than you know. So, uh, California marijuana state law is reducing criminal records. Proposition, Proposition 64 is allowing some felonies to be reduced to misdemeanors, some criminal criminal records to be wiped clean. Wipe that shit clean, man. Yeah, man. See, Dry erase board that re- shit. Retroactive. These guys are not criminals. Why are they sitting in jail? Money, man. Big, big fucking prison. Yeah, I believe last week I said that the prison economy was coming to an end. And uh, this is a baby step in the right direction. Yes. So more of this is a, is a good thing, in my opinion. Um, it's silly to be uh, putting people in jail for marijuana. Come on. Especially in where it's legal. Stop trying to regulate our goddamn bodies. They keep trying to do it. It's never worked. It's never going to work. Stop doing it. So, yeah, California has... Uh, Received more than 25 reduction requests. 2,500. 2,500. I'm sorry, 2,500 through March to mainly no opposition from the state. They know know what's up. They know it's fucking bullshit. Oh, for sure. They they know they can't win, so they're not wasting their time. And lawyers who specialize in pot defense have noted a steady flow of interest from new and former clients. Good. So California, man, big up to California. Yes, we Boy love up, you. California. Yes, do California that, love. Do the damn thing. We love you. Make that money and, uh, you know, stop imprisoning set, people that don't deserve it. Set the fucking president or sorry, don't set the president. <laughs> Maybe set <laughs> the president right too, but set the precedent for the rest of the fucking country. You know, some backwards ass states like fucking Montana that fucking body slams fucking uh, news reporters that try to question their uh, values. So. Yeah. Oh, there's a little side note to Mr. Montana. Uh, yeah, what's up? He just won his election. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, I can't 50. wait. 50.6% of the vote. I can't wait to hear this goddamn promo. This <laughs> is going to be. He, well, let me tell you something, brother. He needs to come out with a goddamn bandana and a fucking. He needs to rip his fucking suit off, like just right down the goddamn middle. Yeah. Breaking would, news on CNN. I couldn't believe it. Oh, I my God. <laughs> Even after this shit, he still won. That really shows you. Don't go to Montana. Yeah. Don't but, go to uh, Montana. Yeah, man. This is cool. Marijuana, do the damn or marijuana. California, do the damn thing. And marijuana, and, uh, do the damn thing. We all know President Trump is all about that money. Ooh. Maybe before maybe before it's all said and done, Mr. Ooh. Trump, uh, maybe he does the right thing too and uh, makes a federal move to make more money for the United States. Yeah. Stay okay. tuned. Yeah. Maybe. Well, you know what? Weed generally doesn't kill people. No. But you know another drug that kills even less people than weed? I believe I do know, but fucking I'll let you Fucking mushrooms. Tell me. Magic fucking mushrooms, Hell psilocybin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hit him with it, Ray. Yeah, I, I I know a lot about mushrooms. I've done mushrooms many, many, many times. Uh, I've read a lot about it. I've a lot of read a lot of other people's experiences. I'm a huge fan of Terrence McKenna. Um, all natural. Yes, uh, it's all natural. I'm actually looking at uh, a photo on this website. This this actually bothers me uh, more than it should when I see news articles about mushrooms. And then they show regular mushrooms. Like these are not psychedelic ah, mushrooms. Those in the are picture. the wrong mushrooms. These are not. These are like the mushrooms. Fake news. This is the mushrooms you would buy in the goddamn grocery store. But uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. So basically, what uh, what was found out is that only point two percent of ten thousand people needed medical treatment after taking magic mushrooms. Um, and emergency medical treatment for MDMA, which uh, we're gonna cover as well, LSD, uh, alcohol. Oh, sorry. Oh, I probably should have read this whole thing. MDMA, LSD, alcohol, and cocaine were nearly five times higher. Yeah. Um, I will mention with which the, is still a pretty low number because 02 percent. Yeah, that's is a fraction of one percent. That is very low. It's one fifth of one percent. One thing I will say with the MDMA and the LSD thing is that they're you know because of the form that they're given in. There's a lot of other. Um, drugs that are passed off as those things. And obviously, yeah. you know, you're More not tampering too. Right. You're not, like you're that. not getting fake mushrooms. Mushrooms from people. are hard to tamper with. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
they they do say that it could cause anxiety or injury slash accident when mixed with alcohol, which, yeah, I mean, if you're mixing, if you're doing anything with alcohol, right, you could get injured. Right. So, you know, you, you want to be safe with it. If you Ray wanna... gives me a stunner during this podcast, <laughs> it was probably because of alcohol. It is very, very possible. It wouldn't be because of the mushrooms. So <laughs> they, they, uh, they want you to be safe with it, which obviously, uh, you know, I've talked about That's it That's with anything. I've talked about it before. These are very, very intense. Uh, they're very intense substances and you want to treat them with the respect that they deserve because if you don't treat them with respect, they're not going to treat you with respect and your experience is not going to be what it could be. Always got to respect it. Yes. Um, they, uh, the one, the one, one thing that I really wanted to say on this too is, um, you, so people, people talk about with psychedelics, you know, I had a good trip or I had a bad trip. And one thing I really wanted to touch on this is if you're going into psychedelics in your thought processes, I just want to have fun and I want to have a great loving time. I mean, don't get me wrong. Obviously you want to be in a positive mindset and you know, you want to have those good experiences, but I'll tell you what, some of the most important experiences in my life, uh, taking psychedelics were what would be considered to be a quote unquote bad trip. You know, you have a, a bad trip and you know, things don't seem right. And you're thinking about all these bad things in your life or things that have happened. But I think what's really important about that is that, you know, normally you have those things that are just basically buried in the back of your brain and you don't want to deal with them. And when you take a drug like this, where it connects different things in your brain that don't normally connect and it kind of forces you to deal with those things and tackle those things. And I mean, I've had some, some experiences. Uh, I, I, I took something, uh, a, a research chemical, um, and man, I remember just not like I was, this is the worst as I was experiencing. I'm like, man, this is the worst thing ever. Like, I don't like this. I don't enjoy this. And I walked out of it and it was one of the best experiences I ever had because it really forced me to, to tackle some things that were happening in my life at that point head on. And I walked out and I felt like a really positive afterglow and I felt really good. And I definitely at the beginning of that did not feel like I was going to come out of that and I was going to feel that positive energy. And I walked out of it feeling that. And so I think that's very important to understand is that, yeah, you may have, you know, what might be perceived as a bad trip, but as long as you're doing it in the right environment with the right people, people that can take care of you, that can make sure that, you know, things don't go too awry and that, you know, you they don't, don't give you any bad nachos. You don't fucking jump <laughs> off of a goddamn bridge or some shit like that. Um, as long as you don't do anything to physically harm yourself, um, you know, I think that every psychedelic experience is very, very, very important and it's only going to make you a better person. And it's yeah, only well, going to going back to the medicinal purposes. Yeah. Studies have shown that psilocybin mushrooms could help treat severe depression and anxiety. Yeah. We talked about ketamine doing that and uh, mushrooms can fucking do that as well. I can speak from personal experience. Some of, I've never had a bad trip, but uh, some of the best times of my life have been on mushrooms yeah yeah we 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 love it I, I mean we had great times together on mushrooms yes we did <laughs> we had... my first time ever taking mushrooms i was standing outside it was about 11 11 30 at night i made a uh, peanut butter mushroom sandwich not the best not the greatest thing I've... to do but you know i was i, I wanted to try it my yeah. first time ever after about 10 or 15 minutes after i digested it i looked up in the sky and I, all I can remember is my first thought being that, man, this thing is just so beautiful. The sky is just so beautiful. Yes. It's a great night. It wasn't too warm. It wasn't too cold. It was like kind of like a night like uh, tonight. And I can just, ha- I remember this feeling of peace and just yes. beauty in the air. Get out of your own fucking brain and enjoy the beauty oh, of this man. world, man. It was so great. And that same night, I got to enjoy music. Like I never had before. Yes. I got to enjoy wrestling like I never had before. Everything was just so good. Yes. So cool and so fun. And I think after I came down, uh, Ray got to experience his yes. uh, his best night as, uh, on mushrooms as well. Yeah. You know, I, I will say that definitely is up there. I will. Uh, that was so fun. <laughs> after after we talk about this, I will talk about one of my other best mesh- mushroom trips. But oh, yeah, man. We, we literally. Ray spent- was legitimately laughing I have for n- 30 
fucking minutes. Solid. And I am not lying. Solid. 30 I could not fucking stop. minutes. I could not stop laughing. We were watching some old school in your house WWF. It was terrible. And we kept rewinding it back and back. There old was, VHS style too. Oh, so man. it was. And Ray was la- dying laughing. I was dying laughing. And then like five or 10 minutes after we'd watched it over and over and over again, dying laughing. I could hear Ray laughing still. <laughs> he was still laughing. And I turned around. I'm like, are you still laughing? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I still think about that. And like, I have this fond memory in my brain of that. And I will always have that I'll fond ne- memory until the day I die. Like yes. that was a great moment for me. And, yes. I'll yeah. never forget that. That was so cool. Yeah. That, that was so fun. It definitely, I will say that mushrooms really softens you. Like it really, it kind of softens you as a person and it really connects you back to the world and to everyone in it. I remember another one of my amazing, amazing mushroom trips that I had. I remember I was outside. There's actually a picture of me that I still have uh, on my computer that I look at and uh, I can see myself and just kind of remember this moment. And uh, I was sitting outside. I lived in an apartment at the time and uh, I was in my house and not in your house. I was in my house and um, my my buddy came in. He came back. I had a roommate at the time and he came in and um, we were listening, uh, me and my, uh, ex-girlfriend, we were listening to some music. We were listening to some radio head and it was just like, it was too much. And I felt very confined inside and my roommate came home and I was just like, man, I need to be outside. And I went outside and it was just instantly amazing. It was probably about six o'clock at night or so. Um, I don't remember what month it was, but I mean, it was relatively, you know, decent out. It wasn't too hot. And I remember I walked over and I sat in the grass and in the picture, I'm sitting in the grass and I remember I looked down at the grass. I can actually... I remember distinctly like looking at the grass and it's almost like if you look at, if you see a video of stop motion of like grass growing, that's basically what I saw. I just saw this like fragmented, like the earth, like growing in front of me. And it was just so, so amazing to see that. I remember pretty crazy. I remember a bird just flying like really close in front of me. And like, it was like in slow motion the ice cream man, I believe this actually happened. The, the ice cream truck like drove by and it was like the 1950s or something. (laughs) The, the dude put his arm out the window and he waved at me slowly and I waved back at him. And it was just such an incredible, incredible moment. I remember vibes. I remember as well, another really interesting thing. Um, you know, at some point we will kind of talk about, you know, the, the way that space time works and that type of thing. But I thought a really interesting thing. So, um, I have, um, I have a tattoo that a lot, a lot of people comment on. It's based on a uh, psychedelic artist. His name is Alex Gray, and he creates, you know, he's one of the forefathers of the psychedelic art movement, and he's done artwork for Tool, and uh, Nirvana's In Utero record has his artwork on it. And uh, anyway, so if you've seen this stuff from Tool, you kind of know what it looks like. It's basically like human anatomy mixed with like crazy psychedelic colors and, uh, you know, veins and all that type of stuff. And so I remember looking down at my right arm and I saw my arm and I could basically like see into my arm and I could see like the bones and the veins and everything just like flowing through oh, my body. And so was, that's where that comes from. And uh, no, actually, that, I mean, that, oh, was, that was after that was not. No, that was not the that was not the main inspiration. I think I had kind of forgotten about that, but maybe it was uh, in my mind somewhere. Subconscious. But it's almost like I it's like I knew that that tattoo was going to come and that, you know, like I said, I mean, it's a really crazy looking tattoo and a lot of people comment on it. Um, I still get comments. I had it for probably 10 plus years oh, now yeah. and people I like it. always comment on it. And so it was interesting that I saw my arm like that. And then eventually like I got this tattoo that kind of represented that. So it kind of like harkens back and reminds me of that kind of mindset and um, reminds me of, you know, what I'm made up of and, and who I am and who we all are. And it, it just gives me a positive vibe. And um, you know, I, I can look down at my arm and, I can remember a good moment in my life where I was in, you know, an altered state and, um, it makes me a better person. And so, yeah, I hope more people are able to experience this oh, and be able sure. to take magic mushrooms. And like you said, you got to shit off. You got to respect it, but yes. it will put you in a good mood. It will make you have a good time. Most likely. Yes. You know, as long as you're in the proper surroundings and you have somebody that's got your back. Yes. I remember, uh, one of our buddies tried it for the first time. He was going through a rough patch in his trip, and I was in your I was in your room, not in your house, but yeah. you were in my house. But I was in your house. <laughs> <laughs> we're in your house. I was tonight. in your room. I was just reading a magazine, and he just comes in and lays down, like uh, right next to me. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just keep reading my magazine, and then he just looks up and says, "Thank you." 
I said, oh, man, what's up, man? You all right? He said, no, just thank you. I was like, well, I, I don't People know. People don't say that enough. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, just, I, I appreciate you just sitting here and reading your magazine because I couldn't deal with, there was a commotion going on. Outside, motion, motion. By, outside by his room. So he came into Ray's room. He, he just wanted to chill. You know, he just wanted to be, have some chill time. Yeah. And, uh, from there on, he had one of the best experiences you know, on mushrooms that he's ever had. So I believe we walked to Walmart and he had determined at some point that he really needed the new Grand Theft Auto game, which is what someone on ah. mushrooms dis- determines that <laughs> they need to play a game where you drive Horrible around and murder people. On mushrooms. And I believe he also worked there at the time too. So that was actually another bad decision, but uh, yeah, it was, that's a memory that we all have yeah, that all we good. can harken back to and we can remember. And uh, yeah, it was a good, it was a good night. So yeah, yeah all, I've never had a bad experience with it. So uh if it can help your anxiety, help your depression, you know, just to try something. We're only here for roughly 60, 70, 80 years. A blink of a fucking eye, it's man. It's not very long. Blink of a fucking and, eye. And, you know, this isn't fucking Lassie. This isn't Leave it to Beaver. Drugs aren't going to kill you. And, in fact, it may even enhance your life. So, yeah. you know, take it. And, and speaking on that, MDMA. MD fucking MA. M- approved for final trials. To treat PTSD. Yes. this is, It will be possibly legal by 2021. Ray, you want to take this one? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've had a lot of experience in psychedelics, and honestly, I've never... For those that don't know, MDMA is... Ecstasy. Okay. Yes. Uh, X, uh, E. Um, I've actually never had the opportunity to try it before. I've never done it. Um, I've heard a lot of things about it. It just never came across my path. Uh, but I know a lot about it and I've read a lot about it. I've read a lot of people's experiences on it. And I'm once again, I'm not, I'm not saying that everyone's going to have an amazing experience on these things and that it's for everyone. But I think that, um, to just bastardize it and say it's all bad is really, really short sighted. But, um, so basically you have, uh, you have maps, which is, uh, like psychedelic research. They want to, you know, get past this bastardization of psychedelics. And they really want to look at these things objectively and see what the potential benefits are. And we're really, really starting to see that now. So you got three trials. They were passed by the uh, FDA for the use of MDMA for post-traumatic stress disorder. This is pretty big. This is huge. And FDA, especially because we are constantly, constantly sending people overseas to murder people and they come back and obviously they're fucked up. And sure. Rightfully so. We, th- we throw them on, you know, the, the mainstream, uh, you know, antidepressants and stuff. Yeah, and bullshit. And, you know, once again, I, I said it before, I'm not going to say that it's all bad, but, you know, I don't think it works for a lot of people. And so there needs to be a different alternative, and this could be that. Um, so, yeah, these uh, these people were uh, doing this uh, three times. Wait, three times once a month. Yeah, once a month. They tried it three times. Okay. Uh, that still doesn't make sense in my mind, but, yeah. Uh, they're showing encouraging results for patients with uh, treatment uh, resistant uh, PTSD. So, you know, so, they've already yeah, tried they've that already mainstream tried. shit. Yeah. It's not fucking working for them. These people are having uh, anxiety attacks. They're having body shakes, uh, nightmares, insomnia. And honestly, their life is just completely fucked up. The mainstream pharmaceutical industry and the drugs that they're pushing are just not working. And so this shit is actually working for them. And it is really, really fucking cool to hear. Like, I was really, really taken aback when I read that, man, this might actually be legalized by 2021. And yeah. that's fucking nuts. And in, well, this- on that note, it will only be administered by trained psychotherapists. It's not going to be legal, yeah, legal yeah. like uh, you go to Walgreens and uh, pick up your MDMA. Uh, it can only, but it should be, it should, well, it should and it shouldn't because you don't know how responsible people are going to be with that. Yeah. But, uh, it, it, I believe last week I supported legalizing it all. So I still stand by that, but cool. do it with respect. Yeah. You got to respect it. Uh, it's only going to be administered by a trained psychotherapist in licensed centers in no home use. So you have to go somewhere to get your treatment, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Yes. Yes. It works on two thirds of patients. Usually works within three months, and it it cured somebody that a hundred percent cured from PTSD. So the and I'm sure more that they didn't even know about. So sure, the results are in, and the FDA FDA is the Food and Drug Administration has approved trials. So uh, let's help out these guys that are helping protect our country. Um, you know, and, do and, the damn thing. And you know what I will say too that. People that have been in the military are not the only people that have post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, sure. I mean, there's obviously... they should be able to get it first. 
Just my opinion. I mean, I, I don't know that I completely agree with that. I think that anyone who's had a traumatic experience in their life, whether it be from going to war or whether it be from some sort of abuse or, you know, some sort of childhood trauma or some sort of trauma in their life in general, I don't think it re- really matters exactly where it came from. I think if someone is in a situation where they've ha- they have a traumatic experience in their life, regardless of where it came from, and it's deeply, deeply affecting their life to the point where they can't live, they can't function, I think that they deserve to be able to have this as an option. And so, yeah, I think it's fucking awesome that it's happening and I hope it gets legalized. Um, and I hope that the information that's coming out now about it just continues on. And honestly, I feel like it's going to, and I think the powers that be can't fucking hold this stuff back anymore. Like people, there's just too much goddamn information out there about this stuff. And it's obvious that this stuff is the results not, are in the results are in the results that they were telling you that you're jumping out of a goddamn window, that you're jumping off a fucking bridge, you're peeling yourself like an orange with a knife. It's right. Not happening. This is not the fucking wall. Like that's not happening. You're not shaving all your body hair off unless that's your kink. Uh, so yeah, let's fucking let's allow these people to do this. And I think a great start is to do it under the supervision of a trained psychotherapist in a in a you know in a a very sterile environment and eventually i think fuck let's stop trying to regulate people and just let people do this shit so yeah absolutely i'm so happy to see that they're actually giving this shit a chance and it's yes. working give peace a chance give love a chance so drugs will make you love drugs will, drugs make love and i might need some drugs in case i get run into google and they sponsor the podcast they Please try sponsor to, the podcast. They try to make me face this fucking robot in a game of fucking uh, goddamn robots. We game can't of es- go. We cannot escape the fucking robots, dude. I thought we were done with them. The fucking no. blowjob robot did not happen, sadly. And I don't even know if we're getting a shitty version of that. I should probably look into that. But nah, uh, it's but, questionable. Yeah, fucking uh, Eddie, hit him with this. Tell him about the uh, the the Google, Google AlphaGo. Google dot com. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Yeah, uh, yeah they've been around for a little they've, bit. They've created something called the AlphaGo artificial intelligence it has faced off and beat two of the best go players in the world i'm not familiar with go i haven't played it we played chess i apparently it's a very very complicated it kind of looks game. like backgammon it kind of looks like chinese checkers i'm not really sure but uh apparently it's very sophisticated and yeah. intricate i do not know how to play i don't either but uh, apparently this fucking robot knows how to play this would be a terrible idea for us to learn to play that on the podcast and, while we're drinking uh, beer right yeah and he is just dominating the best fucking players in the world owned owned yeah so uh uh the google ai defeated a top uh go player named lee c do and then just recently he defeated the number one player in the world K- we thought he was gonna K- bring Jim. it he yeah. thought he's, he, he thought was he talking had a mad chance. shit there ain't no chance he was talking mad shit about how he had a different strategy and he got fucking stomped no. too so i'm telling you right now google's got this shit on lockdown and uh you know they're not even trying like uh from what i read there's like they're narrowing down the possibilities of the uh, ai's movements in the game yeah. from like over 100 to just 20 and it still beat this guy yeah, I think uh, so. They're, they're <laughs> because they wanted it to be more like a human. <laughs> it's oh like you goodness. humans are so stupid. We got to make our robot Both dumber so that it humans. doesn't kill you so hard. Yeah, they. So apparently, they're gonna now like have like a double team action where like two of the best go players are gonna compete simultaneously against this oh, AI. Yeah, that's right. So that that should be interesting. But I think that we're gonna need a lot more awesome go players to face off against this AI because this AI is just kicking fucking ass taking no goddamn names because it's a fucking computer <laughs> it doesn't take names unless you fucking type it into well it has computer, so. it's saying that uh the ai has made the human players better i thought that was an interesting more creative i thought that was an interesting aspect is like so you gotta raise your game i mean obviously the artificial intelligence in the end i mean artificial intelligence is still written by humans right you know it's just an aggregation of all this information and such so i mean it's still humans but it's just like all of the best together to create this artificial intelligence. And so I think it's really interesting that now the players are actually adapting to this and they're actually growing and getting better and they're actually being challenged by the AI, you know? 
Like that's, you know, when we talked about how, you know, robots are going to take your job, it's like, God damn it, learn how to fix the fucking robots. It's <laughs> like, you know, humans are very adaptable like that, you know, like things change in society and, you know, humans have to grow and adapt, you know, so they can survive. That's our survival instincts. And so, I mean, that's, you know, this is a game, but it's still happening. So I think this is very, very fucking interesting. Yeah, the AI has shown no weaknesses. No, none. Versus the Nada. humans. No weakness at no. all. Fuck. Yeah, we're fucked if we ever let's not learn how to play go because we're done. I'll tell you what, I play fucking chess on my fucking chess app on my phone and I, I get stomped by the fucking chess oh, app. Yeah. So I stand Even no chance on against easy. It's fucking hard. I stand no goddamn chance against this fucking uh, AI in this game. I don't even know how to play. So yeah, it's saying that the, the Google software is getting better at a remarkable pace and problems that AI researchers struggled with for decades suddenly getting solved. And it's evolving at a rapid pace. Robots, I'm telling you right now, you Love fuck you, up robots. my change. You're hitting, getting hit with that uppercut. I don't care if you're good at Boom. go. I, even if I lose a game, you still might get hit with that uppercut just because I'm frustrated right you're now. You're not coming on the bang bus. You're not getting no. on the robot bang bus, okay? <laughs> oh, shit. So, uh, we're not playing Go on the robot bang bus. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play Go something, but it's not gonna be this game. So, and they actually have new technology, Google. Where um, they're having AI recognize what's in a picture, telling when someone's going to get mad, and summarizing documents. Um, they actually have a uh, photo editing ability where if you take a photo and there's like a chain link fence in the photo, like say you're behind a fence and somebody's on the other side and the, obviously the fence is in the way, it will automatically remove the fence from the photo, which is fucking insane. Why does it do that? I don't know what is why. The, because what, is, it, what is the purpose of that? Just because Google can do it. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically like automatic Photoshop. Because I would yeah. I would hate to get the eraser tool and try to erase that goddamn fence in the oh, background. I know. And this AI is better at Photoshop than I am. So yeah, God automatically. Damn it. It's just in the settings. If you if you saw my Photoshop of the fucking uh, the Montana congressman, you would tell you could tell that this AI could definitely kick my ass in a Photoshop battle. So. Oh, absolutely. And the speech to text. Come on, you're supposed to be on my side, man. Uh, I'm on Google's side. They, I wanted them to sponsor us, <laughs> oh, man. Fuck man. that shit. All right. All right. <laughs> but uh, the speech to te- text is getting better and better with every generation of phone that comes yeah. out. You know, before it used to be really crappy. Then it was just still like, pretty still, crappy. Then it was but... kind of crappy. And then it's just crappy but doable. Now it's just like, eh. It's still, you know? it's actually still crappy. I still it, it, don't like it. It's only it. crappy when like they want to make fun of you and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I like to say really, really evil things to uh, Alexa and to Siri and such. So uh, they they get very offended by me, and I take great solace in offending a goddamn Alexa, robot. Is Alexa the Amazon? This is the Amazon one. I ah. I'm uh, I'm an Apple guy, as I talked about. So I normally talk dirty to Siri. So honestly, I like. But if, Alexa, if you want to join the fucking party. <laughs> I will definitely throw down on a fucking robot bang bus in a three way with Alexa and fucking Siri and Eddie. You're not invited, so Alexa, no offense. We can get down, Alexa. I'm just saying, Amazon. I love your shit. I love that Amazon Prime. I love all that shit. Eddie Amazon. is currently unzipping his pants at Google and, and Amazon uh, right now. I think. Walmart can suck my dick because uh, you know I just don't like Walmart right now. I don't know why you're talking about Walmart. They have nothing to do with because we're Amazon is shutting down Walmart. Walmart had to shut down like ten fucking stores I did last not, year. I actually, oh man, they only have like eight billion left. Well, do they have more store? What what is well, a, here's the thing? What's a higher number? They're shutting stores down. They're not creating more stores. What is who? What is a higher number? The amount of stores that Walmart has, or the amount of Instagram followers that Kendall Jenner has? Oh, Kendall Jenner. For sure. Probably. Probably. She, she got that game unlocked. I, ha- I had to throw that out there. So. She's looking good, too, buddy. Yeah. Instagram.com slash Kendall Jenner. I believe. Uh, you heard it here first. Eddie the Jerk slash Instagram. 21 and killing the game yeah. right now. So. In, on a fucking yacht in the middle of France. Where the fuck yeah, she's at? Who fucking knows? Fucking who fucking good. knows? So. Uh, yeah, so there was one quote that I liked in this that I wanted to drop that I thought was hilarious. So uh, the quote is, we'll throw the quote up. This is the left quote to the left of the uh, the writing is, this program will not lead to a dystopian future in which humanity is enslaved by killer robots, period, at least not for a few more years, yeah. and write <laughs> quotation marks. So uh, I don't think it's quite to that level, but I think that we see as we move further on along that this 
these type of things are just getting more and more prevalent. They're getting more and more advanced. It'll and be there's inter- no way to escape it, man. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Google's take on this because I've always backed Google as a company that's going to change. The- Until they have the robots trying to crush your brain. Yeah, this is going to change the future for us as human beings. But uh, will they have any empathy for the human beings that are losing their jobs because their fucking robots are taking everybody's fucking Of course fucking they jobs? won't. I actually just went and saw Alien Covenant today, and that was a main driving point of the movie was the AI. And trust me when I say in that movie, they def- the AI definitely didn't have any sympathy for humanity. And I don't think that unless that's written into them that they're going to have that. And so get ready. Your robot overlords are coming. They're coming. Yeah, so. If you work in retail, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. So I just read that the other day. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I think that's all we have to say on that. And with that, we're going to hit the final segment of the show. Final so- segment, Jerks of All Trades podcast, episode number 10. 10. We love you guys. Yes. Thank you for sticking with us. Yes. Uh, let us know what you think. You got the randomizer up? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so real quick, once again, let's talk about the fact that we called bats last week. And a lot of people got beaten. <laughs> no more fucking... bats. We are putting an end to this right now. All right. So um, bat Armageddon is over with, and we will create a new Armageddon starting right now. <laughs> all right. So we've got, do we want to go with four again? Do we feel cool with four as the number of subjects? We might have to go six because what? these bats are just out of fucking control right. right now. So we're going six. We got to go six. Six topics. We're going to go refresh. God damn if a knife or a gun ends up in this. Fucking, All right. Uh, so we got medicine, pork, Buddhism, shoes, coins, and bananas. Eddie, what oh, you got? No, there's a lot of good ones here. We have medicine. We have bananas. We have pork, Buddhism, shoes, and coins. We might have to narrow this down to two of them because... All right, well, I'll pick mine. You pick yours. We do, medicine, must... we do medicine just about every week. Pork is kind of lame. I, yeah. I kind of like Buddhism. I like Buddhism. That's shoes my pick. Shoes are iffy. I mean, The Rock just came out with some shoes, so I don't know what else there is to talk yeah. about there. Coins, yeah, and then bananas. Bananas, too monkey-like. Yeah, too. I like Buddhism. I like Buddhism and bananas. So if you like Buddhism, I like Buddhism. Let's go Buddhism because we got bananas and we already talked about that and putting the condoms on the bananas. Oh, yeah, that is very... Check out the support page of the JOAT podcast. So, yeah, Buddhism is... We want our Buddhism story Yes, without any baseball bats involved. I think that this was the only logical topic as we had (laughs) bats... It makes sense. As we had bats last week. We went too far extreme with the baseball bats and violence. And now we're going to the other extreme right. with Buddhism. We're going to Buddhism. We're going to non-violence. And so this <laughs> we is We have to actually... make up for all the violence that we caused. So let, give me week. an awesome Buddhism topic. Buddhism. And it doesn't, no one has to get hurt and it just has to be something cool and interesting. Yes, please. And maybe let's bring some motherfucking love to the goddamn world. And Absolutely. that's what I hope happens. It, so. it will happen. For yes. Sure. So it will happen. Yes. Yeah, so Buddhism next week, and we will definitely have a lot of other fun topics for you guys as well we love you guys thank you guys so much for Dude. all of your support thank you guys for listening to the show definitely check us out uh go to itunes subscribe please. subscribe review 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 fucking rate us review Five us star. stitcher uh just check us out online and give us some love and we're gonna give you some love back we love you guys we ain't going anywhere we will, yes. we will be back next week yes. episode number 11 it's only 11. a matter of time till we get to episode 100 yes we're doing our best to do our best and to keep you entertained don't go anywhere yes we love you guys jerk all trades podcast we are out out